what point did you did you feel like you were you were um you were ready to like kind of step out on your own and what was like the first what was the first part before you actually like got into building up your your brand for your restaurant what was like kind of like the first the first process the first step that you took towards towards that like when you when you stepped out on your own well, i took to the streets you know what i'm saying after i uh parted ways with the 24 grill downtown i just my kids was like that you can just sell some dinners so i had an idea in my head it was called 313 Trap Kitchen. Trap Kitchen. In the trap, in Trap Kitchen. Like, whatever, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, that's what the first thing was. So, I was selling food out, you know, my mom's apartment. I was selling food out my daughter's kitchen. I was selling food out my homeboy's kitchen. You know what I'm saying? It was like I was doing pop-ups in different places. And everybody was loving the food. So, I end up doing the um, place where I'm at right now. It used to be the uh, 313 Dynasty. They had a comedy night. And they had a full kitchen in there. And my man was like, man, you want to come and cook? Guy rolled up, coached with the Hurricanes with me. One of them coached with uh, the Canatars with me. They was uh, doing a uh, comedy show. So I'm like, yeah, huh? Like, yeah. So I told all my people, I'm like, man, we right here this night. And it was, it was a good night. You know what I'm saying? So they was doing comedy shows once a month. Now they call me in once a month for the comedy show. I'm like, what y'all doing with this space? Let me lease this space. You know? My wife, she was like, uh, babe, you should see if they can, if you can lease that space. So I ended up leasing that space and that's where uh, Green Mile Grill started. Oh, we run the Trap Kitchen. It started as Trap Kitchen. We um, opened up two years ago in March, March 1st. And we was originally the Trap Kitchen 313. Right. Come find out that some guys in California had that name already, Trap Kitchen. So they uh, reached out to me on Facebook and Instagram, like, man, you can't use that name. So we're going to sue you. And I ain't got time for all that. I'm like, man, I'm from the Green Mile anyway. We just turned this more to Green Mile Grill. That's more meat anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's where it went. It is two years. Uh, I'm two years ahead of my three-year plan. My three-year plan when I was in prison was to get me a restaurant or a food truck or a catering business or whatever. So now I'm doing the catering. I'm, you know, got the restaurant. Actually, I got two. One of them in Warren, but it never opened because of the corona hit. I was open it last year, but corona hit. And that's like some stuff I got to health department stuff I got to get they telling me I'm six months to a year away, and then they don't even know if they still gonna be able to come do the inspection. So. Okay, and uh, at this point, when you when you actually started Green Mile Grill, were you on parole yet? Uh, when I started trying to pitch, no. no. Okay, so did you were actually what you had like a maybe like a year left? I probably had like six months. Left. Six months left. Six months. Okay, so, um, so at this point, you still can't communicate with with uh Chef Hill. with Chef Hill. No. Okay, so, um, and for people who know who who know about uh the the when when the Green Mile Grill first opened, like it it was successful like right out the gate, like like it like it went crazy. I remember it like I was one of the people, you know, tapping in, coming to get <laughs> coming to give me some lamb chops and. And po' boys and all of that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, how did you handle the the early success? And you you're not really like you're not really able to tap in with the person that you know that you 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 know you you kind of probably deem responsible for some of this stuff. Like, how did you how did you kind of handle like that early success and and keep and honestly keep it going without without being able to communicate with Sheffield? Because I uh, I had met some people in prison. You know what I'm saying? We used to do symposiums uh, we, for the food tech program. We did some symposiums and we would, well, chef would like invite chefs from all over, you know, the state of Michigan. And they would come in and, you know, we would prepare meals for them, but it would be a Q&A. So in the process of that Q&A, you know, you build some good relationships. And, you know, as far as people that's in the food industry, 
everywhere from butchers to wholesalers to restaurant owners. You know. So those people, they said, get out and you need some help or you need to talk about anything, you know, let me know. So I tapped in with a couple of them and they was mutual friends. And it was just like, you know, communicating with them to him and him through them to me, plus whatever else I could pick from him. That's what that was. Okay, okay. So, um, so fast forward, you know, to when you actually did get off parole. Once you once you actually were discharged from parole, did you like like how long did it take you to hit Chef Hill up? No, actually before. Once they said we can do the uh, Renaissance thing. Oh, so that was actually that was actually uh, I thought that was like maybe like as soon as you got released, that was actually like a like around. Yeah, that was uh that was I want to say July, late July, August. We did that uh, 2019. Oh, so that was probably a couple months before you were discharged. Yeah. Like okay. Okay. All right. That's what's up. Um. So once you once you were discharged from parole, what was like? What were your thoughts then? Were you like, did, did you have any thoughts of like switching anything up or doing doing more or doing you know anything like that? Like, did you did you have any any plans on doing anything different because you were because now you're discharged? Anything different like going back to the streets. Um, not even really just going back to the streets. That, yeah, maybe maybe that, but like not even not even really that. Just um, like like kind of uh uh maybe I, I know like sometimes when people are under they're under like state papers or they on probation or parole or anything like that. Like they might limit themselves to maybe like even doing business in one area. Like. Even if it's not, it's not not even street business. Even if it's legitimate business, like did you did you like immediately say like, oh man, I'm I'm definitely about to like you know franchise and yeah, and I'm I gonna see. I'm gonna do some you know some some things outside of the city now. Well, not far. Yeah, well, the inner city of Detroit, which was like I said, I, for my birthday, it's in July. I had uh, rented and went and leased the space for a second restaurant. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the carryover was. So everything I was making, I was pointing to there. And then Corona hit. Right, so right, right. Everything. You okay. Know what I'm so yeah, I'm definitely, actually, I'm, I got some guys, man, they come from Cleveland, I'm not Cleveland, from Toledo. Toledo. Every time they come, man, every time they in the city, whatever, they come through, they're like, man, you gotta get something in Toledo. So I've been thinking about it. Thanks. Right. You know, I'm gonna see what's up, man. I, the guy who um, got me the job at the 24 Grill, his name Russ White. He used to own it, you know, but he still, like, pretty much owned the run or whatever. He, um, he from Philly, and he's about to get another restaurant. And I was pitching, I just talked to him the other day, a couple days ago. And we chopping up on some things as far as franchising and all that type of stuff. And, like I said, there's, there's different people that you can meet over the years, and they give you different games. Why not run it from somebody that's been successful in business, period, you know? Right, and and that brings me actually to, to my next question um, of, you know, kind of the ways that you were used to doing business versus the way you do it now. Like, what people do know about um, certain industries, uh, maybe like, you know, food and uh, entertainment, but like food being an uh, industry that's kind of, yeah, you cutthroat if you would say you know uh, kind of like you know how do you handle um adapting to legitimate business versus the streets like as far as issues like if you feel slighted by somebody the way that street guys will handle it versus being a legitimate businessman like how did you adapt to that it's pretty much the same way because you can either look at it like say i'm in the streets and i get into it with you now we're beefing so who's going to make money all you gotta do is reinvent yourself. You know, it's a lot. You know, food, man, there's so much hate out here. Right. Yeah. So, well, who cares? Like I said, I was making money when I was like 14 years old, so I'm used to it. It, it really ain't nothing. I just keep on doing me. And currently, I'm up for favorite chef of America. You know. Yeah, y'all go vote for Chef Dink because he is got that one stop approval. I definitely voted for him. So y'all, y'all, y'all tap in. I'm actually gonna put a link in the description 
for y'all to uh, go vote for for Chef Dink if the if the voting polls is still open. I don't know. They still are. open till uh, Thursday. They're going down to the final two. You know, so okay. I'm currently number one in our group, and there's only five. There's five people left in each group. I don't know exactly how many groups are left, but there's five people left. And after the five Thursday, they're gonna take the top two. I think the top one. So yeah, I get them both. Get them both in. Okay, so and um, so like, how how do you like, how do you how do you come up with your? We we don't you know I know how it is. We don't have to discuss the recipes, you know. Um, I'm not even gonna ask, but I just want to know like the process of <laughs> the process of coming up with these recipes, and do you have any help? Yeah, I got I got help. You know, you talking about far as the recipes or far as the re the recipes. The, the recipes the really just be. Freestyle, it's just like music. You okay. Know what I'm saying? I, uh, you know the basis. The basis is, you know, you know how to rap. So right. you can freestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get in the groove, once you get a beat, beat give you a different vibe. Cooking the same way. When I get in the kitchen sometimes, I don't even you know I just open the refrigerator and I look. And I might try it at home. And if I try it at home and it's successful, then I try it, I'll put it out there. You know, you got your go-to meals, but then the other stuff. And see, like right now where I'm at, like, it's really carry-out. But my skill is not carry-out. My skill is high. Even. My skill is five-star. I remember we were sitting up at the grill, and we was closed. And one of my homeboys came in, you know, from, got something from another restaurant. Paid like $70 for it. I'm like, man, I just looked at him like this. I looked at him. I put it on the menu the next day. They love it. You know what I'm saying? He's like, dog, you cold. You just looked at it. You ain't asked me what it was. I'm looking at I know what it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like that. Right. And how do you, like, how do you, um, what I, what I, what I want to know is, like, what is the skill of, um, being a fool lover? Like what is the what is the skill of you knowing like okay this is this is the right this is the right recipe like other people outside of me are gonna gravitate towards this this you know this ingredient or this recipe like you know putting yourself outside of being a food lover yourself. You'd be surprised how many people just like to eat good food and try new things, but they scared. Now you can shoot something under a person; they won't even know what it is. You know, and once you once they taste it, they be like, man, this is pretty good. You know? Right. And it's like, that's what I go back to the food tech program. Those flavor combinations. You know, I did some um, pineapple bowls or something. I made some pineapple bowls. It was hot. It was summertime. And I don't want to put all this, this heavy stuff on the menu. You know, so let's, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's put some fresh fruit on it. I charred the pineapples and put some, like, coconut rice in it. With some, you know, some teriyaki shrimp or some uh, sesame uh, chicken or something like that. And just put it all in a bowl. And the pineapple, I cut the inside of the pineapple and just made it a bowl. So you can literally eat everything in the pineapple. Then once you finish with the, the actual food, the proteins, the starches or whatever, the same vegetables or something, then you can eat the pineapple. And it's refreshing, it's hot. So you want, you know what I'm saying? And it's, I don't know, they say it's good, you know? So it's like cooking for seasonal, seasonal cooking. You know, you might say, man, why don't you make some chili? Man, it's 90 degrees outside. I'm like, make some chili. Who want to make? Do you, you want me to make a whole bunch of chili just so you can eat some? You know, no, man, you gotta, you gotta do it like me. I don't never make nothing that I, I will eat, or that's how I know a lot of people want. Like we do soul food on Wednesdays. Because if you, why would you do soul food Sunday and everybody nine times out of ten is cooking soul food on Sundays? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you have to, you have to play, you have to play the game, just like drugs, right? Free game. And I try to sell the same. I did like when I approach the dope game, right? I'm like everybody selling drugs, everybody selling food, everybody pretty much selling the same food. Well, this is what I do. I sell it a little cheaper, and I can sell it faster. You know what I'm saying? Same way with the drugs. I approach it the same way. Same way. Then I give you something different. So. Okay, so uh, what is like your favorite food to cook? Cause you say like right now you like kind of like in the carry out uh process, but that's not your specialty. 
And like I, I've seen you like, you know, cater other events and you know, like cook them or anything. You know what I'm saying? Or forget that damn near and cook anything. Um what uh what is your like your favorite food to cook or even maybe like like a favorite spice to use or something like that? Like just what's the if it's if it's for me, if I'm cooking for me, ain't no trouble. I, I love pizza. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a pizza guy. So if it's just for me to eat, then I just make I make anything. But if you want something, then I keep hearing like they want this, they want this, they want that. You know what I'm saying? If I get the feedback from that, then I'm giving the people what they want. Because at the end of the day, it's not about you. It's about them. And when you make food and people are satisfied, that's the whole thing about food. That's why I said that on that bump, looking at the sixty service for that seven years. I thought about it. I gotta give these people something they can have all the time. You serenade with food, you warm with food, you know what I'm saying, you party with food. Food is a necessity. And the more you give the people what they want, then the more they're gonna come back. So it's not really what I like to cook. Because I can, like you say, I pretty much can cook anything. If I see it, I definitely can cook it. So I'm going off of what you want. And it ain't about me. Because if you're spending your money, you gotta get what you want.